Let's do a little brainstorming. So for robots and stuff, uh, let's do vertical. And uh, for this type of thing, I could also do rotation just because I'm gonna end up mirroring these and you can get some really interesting shapes with things that are kind of askew. And of course you can go in here and uh, tap these things individually. I thought you could, there you go. You can tap these things individually and then you can scale, rotate. Um, in case you missed the last couple streams, uh, move, there we go, scale, move, scale, rotate. You can put these things together if you want to. Um, you can also go construct, and that'll construct them all together. You can construct with rotation. You can construct horizontally. You can construct vertically. You can turn off rotation. So if you're doing weapons or ships, usually doing a horizontal with no rotation is usually pretty good. Um, but we're going to go vertical with rotation. And we're not going to construct. We're just going to do take these shapes here. So let's say I like these. I'm going to hit this little output button here. And then we'll throw those right into Photoshop. So I don't need brainstorm anymore. And you'll notice I didn't even look at the thumbnails. It doesn't really matter <clears throat> what they end up looking like. We'll just go what we got. So throw some thumbnails in here. And if you have other thumbnails left over from um, what you've been working on, you can throw those in here as, as well. We're just looking for basic shapes here. I have another program here called, <clears throat> you know what, we might have to make a window for that. You can see the icon for it right there. It's the Brutus symmetry. It's that little pink and black thing right here. And basically all that's gonna do, all I'm gonna use it for is doing symmetri symmetry from left to right. So uh, let's see if I remember how to do this. It's been a little bit. So for what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this thumbnail here. I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna go to copy paste, control C, control V. I'm going to move it uh, to the left here and I'm going to put a, a ruler out here just to kind of mark where my symmetry line is going to be. So now that this is on a separate layer, what I can do is let's put a layer in between those two. I'm going to hit X to get white. I'm just going to fill that layer with white here. <clears throat> so now I'm on a separate layer with this thing right here and I've got a symmetry line or not a symmetry line, but just a ruler drawn down the middle here. So what I'm going to do is I can hit, um, I can go, I can hit the, it's a symmetry left to right button basically. And I think I have that assigned to, let's find out what I have it assigned to. Hold on just a second, keyboard shortcuts. Um, because it is a window, wait, it is an extension. So edit, keyboard shortcuts, window, Workspace, extensions, um, <clears throat> okay, brush right have so I can do alt control B. Um, oh, you know what, it's an action, isn't it? So I'm gonna go to my window. Now you're obviously, you guys are seeing all this because I don't have windows set up for all my actions and I'm not capturing the entire thing. So bear with me here. Um, flip horizontal, flip vertical. Maybe not. I'll just hit that button anyways. Um, <clears throat> so basically what I can do is, let's go ahead and undo that. And, oh, you know what? I just installed the NVIDIA experience and now it wants to do instant replay stuff. Ugh, I'm going to cancel out of that. I'm hitting keys that it likes. You can get exited. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do on this thing first is I'm going to flip this thing thing horizontally. So this side looks a little bit more interesting. I'm going to rotate this and I'm going to hit enter and I'm just going to mirror this across that symmetry line <clears throat> and that'll give me something to start with. So now I can go back to my original here and I'm going to hit M. We're going to grab this one off onto its own. You know what? Let's do this one. We're going to go control copy, control paste, drop that layer down behind. And I'm going to move my symmetry line over. And on this layer, we're going to do a quick mirror. There we go. And while I'm painting on this layer, so I'm going to go to my brush here and we'll do square soft, I suppose. Let's do square hard. There we go. Uh, if I want um, pin size to be turned on, I just turn on this icon at the very top here. And Actually, 
so that you guys may or may not be interested in that. Let's start a new window here. There we go. So this is my brush writer window. That's where I'm um, grabbing my brushes from. And if you guys haven't used this, it's pretty cool. So we're gonna go in here in the brush writer and uh, <clears throat> we'll just start uh, filling some of this stuff in. I'm gonna go to view and turn rulers off. It's control R, no wait. I want to view, I wanna see the rulers, but I wanna do control H to hide the rulers. That's, they're still there, um, but I'm gonna hide them temporarily. And what I can do is I can just work on half of this model. So if we want to, we can like pop out some arms here. We can give them like a big domed back or something. And then he's got some shoulders and then some, um, some hands here. And these can be his hips. And this can be something cool. We can also start digging in some of these areas. And then we can go ahead and like pop some hips out here. <clears throat> So give him some stocky legs. Now, the reason I'm only doing half is because all I have to do, I wish I could remember the hotkey for this, I can hit the little symmetry button and it'll go ahead and symmetrize, symmetrize this for me. And you can do that. So we're also gonna hop into ZBrush here and do a little drawing in ZBrush. Because I'm just doing thumbnails, <clears throat> you can do real-time uh, symmetry in ZBrush, which is a little bit nicer than having to hit a button and stuff. Uh, but this is cool too, and it'll get you some pretty cool ideas. Um, just like when we were doing, was it F1, F2, Control F1, Control F2, I don't remember. Um, another thing we were doing when we were doing the windows is, uh, so, okay, so that's one robot. You can save it off, whatever you want to do. Um, another thing, let's go ahead and let's save this. I'm going to do Control Shift S. Go to my desktop, and I haven't done this yet, but it makes sense in my head, so we'll see how it plays out. So we're gonna go to desktop, uh, let's call that thumbnails, and we're gonna hop over into ZBrush here. So let's pop ZBrush up, there we go. And Brush Raider, we can pop down. So, now we're in ZBrush here. <clears throat> let's do a little bit of concepting in here. So I'm gonna open up this plane 3D. I'm also gonna go into texture import, desktop. We're gonna grab our thumbnails here. And then I'm just going to select that, add it, and we'll do a little thumbnail sketching in, uh, in ZBrush. Uh, we can do, I can paint all of these thumbnails on there, but local symmetry might be kind of weird. So what I'm going to do is just do one at a time. So I'm going to go Z. I'm not going to go Z. I'm going to hit Z so I can go in here and start painting. And then I'm going to go to Geometry, uh, Make Polymesh 3D, Turn Off Smooth Modifier, Divide It Up, and then... I can either rotate this image around so I can hit Z to go back to the widget and I can make, if I touch where I want it to go, I can actually rotate right around that point. So I can do my rotations here and I can also do flip horizontally here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to flip horizontally and I'm going to bring my plane up. Hey, what's up, Brandon? Uh, so trying to use a slice curve tool I have to reduce or freeze the, freeze the sculpt as it has multiple levels. I freeze it, split with a slice curve. All is good until I divide the geometry again, the piece that splits up. Yes, yeah, so yeah, anytime you're using the slice tool on something that has multiple uh, subdivision levels, it's gonna be a little bit tricky. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not, I mean, let me uh, answer that real quick. So. If I go over here, and we have a cylinder, and we have multiple subdivision levels, and then we want to use any, any I mean, gosh, any sort of deformers are going to act weird. You can, because, yeah, as soon as you slice, you're losing, you can't even reconstruct because you've got, um, you've got subdivision levels, and I guess, yeah, if you freeze, and then you can slice subdivision level one, and then that will bring your subdivision levels back. Oh boy. Um, what did I just tap? There we go. Um, I 
That's a good one. I mean, what I would probably end up doing is something like, and it's going to be pretty destructive, but it would be, um, so I grab a cylinder here and I go make polymesh 3D, divide it up, delete lower. Yeah, no matter what, I'm probably going to lose, if I'm making any sweeping changes like that, I'm going to lose subdivisions. Unless, yeah, even that, even any, any of this stuff is going to break your reconstruction history because it's cutting in extra triangles. Um, I, I mean, I think that's just a feature of subdivisions is that if you want to maintain subdivision history, it's going to be destructive to go in there and just add any extra geometry, I think. Or I mean, you can I mean you can kind of do stuff like this thing has subdivisions, but I want to free subdivision levels, and then I want to like go in here and do this kind of stuff, and then unfreeze, and then it'll add the geometry. It'll kind of mask out where I have geometry, and then just give me new geometry. So that's fine to do, but like slicing, I don't know a way around that. That's that's beyond my expertise. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, freezing subdivision levels is okay. I usually though, I mean, you can slice it and remesh it and project and get your details back, but that's kind of a, I, I guess I'd have to see the um, the uh, the final uh, the final product or whatever. <clears throat> so if I divide this up uh, and then I can go make my plane as big as I want to, if I'm gonna be you know painting a full character on it, and then I'm going to RGB here, and I'm going to, if I start painting, um, you can turn Z-Add off, and standard Z-Add, and we have, oh, you know what? So this is pure black, so it's actually alpha where it's pure black. So what we need to do is go in here to intensity, and just crank that back just a bit, just to make it not pure black, because that's pure black, and that alpha, um, spotlight treats as an alpha, so I'm going to hit Z, and then just start painting, and then I can just start painting this shape onto ZBrush. Now, if I hit X, <clears throat> that's going to paint it in symmetry, so you can kind of see where my symmetry line is. So let's go ahead and start painting in symmetry mode here, and we can kind of start getting that shape here. And we can start using a little bit of this. If I go into standard brush, we'll drop in an alpha, a square alpha, and I'm also going to switch to flat color so you can see a little bit better. So now I can hit C to sample, and now we've got kind of a, we kind of got the same setup as I had in Photoshop. We can sample this, we can go through here, we've got a square brush that we just made with standard brush, and now we can start putting in like, uh, you know what, also let me, we can turn on lazy radius if we want to do smooth lines, but I'm going to turn it off, just so I can be a little bit more choppy, a little bit more quick. We can start adding in maybe some hands here. And of course, we don't even have to, if we wanted to, I could export those brush eraser things as alphas and just import them through my brush menu. So if we do have alphas, let's see if we get alphas we got here. Um, industrial, anything good in here? Maybe some nice square ones. Hmm. Let's grab this one. Grab this little rebar one here. And we can go to like drag rect. We can kind of start dragging some of these out. Oh, you know what? I do have some more alphas in here. Let me look under brush. Um, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. What am I looking for here? It was not hard surface brushes. It was... Oh, I thought it was hard surface brushes. Actually, you know what? I'm looking in the wrong place. It was alphas, and it was, uh, there we go, hard surface. <clears throat> and let's see if we have any just like cables, pulls, vents, container. It doesn't really matter what the shape is. I'm just like kind of looking for ideas. So these are some um, alphas I got off Gumroad. I'll leave the um, the link for these. Let's go to drag dot. I'll leave the link for these in the uh, description when I throw them up 
on YouTube. But um, you know what? I need big blocky alphas. Big blocky alphas. Where are those at? Stencils. These might work. Oh yeah, we'll use dragons. You know, and if I do choose a more organic thing, like we go in here to the tattoos, um, you know, that's a, that can be a cool start. I'm also going to, you see how it's fading around. I'm going to drag my focal shift to negative 100 just to keep it nice and crispy. And uh, you can also go over here to your alpha menu, modify, and you can change a little bit of that. Yeah, sorry about that, Brian. I wish I had a better answer for you. Um, if I could see the model, it might help, but it's off the top of my head, it seems like slicing is going to do weird things. Hey, you didn't miss too much. We're just getting started. Cool, cool. Um, so yeah, so uh, I don't have any big blocky alphas, but you know what we'll make do. And you can also make your own big blocky alphas. Let me think. Do I want to do that at all? Yeah, let's do it. So let's say we want to make our own alphas here. We can use ZBrush to do that. We can actually, let's see if we can do this. I'm, I'm just experimenting today. Uh, we'll see how that turns out. So we've got a, we just got a canvas here and we have a simple brush. So if we change that to a white color, maybe we can go in here. Oh, got my, so I think if we do this and then we can do our MRGBZ grabber does that work? We have a texture we can stamp and height we can stamp. But we don't really need the height. Okay, so we can switch between this and possibly the erase brush. So you can use your 2.5D brushes to just quickly kind of go in here and you can hold down shift and you can start blocking in just like some, um, you know, some square brush alphas and stuff like that. Of course, you can also use geometry. Let me see. You know what? Oh, you know what I got? Okay, this is going to be good. Well, this is probably going to be mediocre, but at least it'll get us somewhere. So I'm going to go to my brushes here. So I'm just going to drag out a cylinder here. <clears throat> Hide. New. Drag out cylinder. That kept gray. Uh, make poly mesh 3D. Then I'm going to go into my brushes here. And under military, I think I have my commander. I got dozer, commander. So if I go into my commander brushes, this is all the some of the brushes that I just grabbed off of the commander guy that I made. So if we take some of these and we do maybe a geometry, modify topology, uh, mesh from brush. So now we can just capture this. So now let's see if we go, if I change my document, let's do that. I'm going to change my document to black. So I'm going to go the background here. I'm going to choose a black color and then I'm going to go to my range and I'm going to just crank that center rate. There we go. Negative one. Now we have a black background here. And then now if we switch to a um, white color with flat color. So now we just have basically a silhouette and we got a cool shape. So now I can just drop this model to the background here. We can go to the MRGBZ grabber. Let's see if this works. So if I grab this, that can be considered a new alpha. So if I go back to what I was painting here, and we grab our, get rid of that. We grab our standard brush here. We've got drag dot. Uh, we've changed it to focal shift. So if we grab that alpha we just made, and we have a black color. That's going to switch flat color to matte cap red for some reason. Anyway, we can still drag out that alpha. Oh wait, we don't want the alpha. We want the texture. So if I grab the texture here and I go texture, make alpha. Now we just force that into an alpha and now we can just drag a pure black version of that. And now we can do drag rect and start dragging out some of those shapes here. So you can just make a collection of alphas from like Greeble brushes you have. I'm not going to sit here and bore you with that just because, you know, I should have probably done that already. But uh, let's see, we've got RGB turned on, we've got flat color. For some reason, it's forcing it. Did it do something weird? Oh, there we go. No, we want that on. Can't just fill material. That's weird. Standard brush. Huh. I don't know why I did that. 
Um, okay, so anyways, we've got a standard brush, we've got an alpha, we've figured out how to just kind of um, grab alphas from just agreeable libraries of um, models you might have. And then uh, we'll get rid of that because he looks kind of hokey. And then we'll just sample here. So we've done Photoshop concepting a little bit just for thumbnail stuff. And now we're doing a little bit of ZBrush concepting. And I like the ZBrush concepting just because for number, numerous reasons. But one of the reasons is because we can just do um, symmetry on the fly. Um, I do have that symmetry tool we were talking about in Photoshop. But uh, like I said, you have to hit a button and it's not real time. And ZBrush has a bunch of other cool stuff, like if we wanted to get into radial symmetry. We can turn on radial symmetry on the Z. We can do that kind of stuff too. And uh, we can hold down shift and we can smear this out if we want to. And we can drag on alphas if we want to. That's kind of a cool look. Uh, let me get rid of symmetry, radial symmetry here. It's kind of a little tilt shift. Huh, I like that. Uh, let's see, miss anything? And uh, I, I apologize in advance if I do miss questions. I was missing them left and right at uh, Pixelogic's live stream on Tuesday. Ah, uh, yeah, so yeah, re. <laughs> that's part of the. Uh, stru I mean, it's the difference between. Uh, doing assets for Hollywood and doing assets for real-time solutions. You know, there's a lot of tricks. It's all tricks, especially when you get into environment art. Um, I mean, real-time solutions for characters is a bunch of tricks too when you get into blend shapes. Uh, recently, like, um, oh, what was it? You know, I went, I was, uh, worked at Sony Online Entertainment. I went to Sony Imageworks and they were doing, where they were doing facial capture for, I think it was Beowulf, and they had you know, it was tons and tons of data. It was 15 years ago, 10 years ago. But, um, you know, it was, you, you know, you lose a lot, even even for Hollywood and pre-rendered stuff, you use a lot, you lose a lot of information or it sometimes loses information when you go from pure animation mocap data to a blend shape system that's deconstructed into separate blend shapes and then put back together and then run through, you know, sometimes you just, or they're dragging, you moving control curves independently and they can still create all the shapes you need it can still fall a little bit flat because in entertainment, you kind of need to push things sometimes a little bit, even if you capture the performance perfectly, which, you know, that's questionable. Um, it's going to, <clears throat> you know, fall a little bit flat. And uh, even right now in video games, we're seeing a lot of that same mentality of what they were doing 10 years ago, which was we have all this data. What can we do with all this data? And we're using it to drive animations and then it falls a little bit flat and it's because you know when you got to go into compress everything and break it into um, deconstruct it into blend shapes and then get it all to work together and run real time and then by the time it makes it in the game it's just like ugh, you know uh, not not as I mean you still use all that raw data you have is excellent but that doesn't it, you know the problem isn't really being solved in the raw data the problem being solved in engine and that's that's a tricky problem to solve for sure. So, um, yeah, real time solutions for stuff is. Uh, I mean, and that's why I like the game industry a lot. I mean, I haven't worked in film, so I can't say one way or the other. But um, one of the things I do like about the game industry is that problem solving stuff, where it's just you can't you can't rely on any sort of brute force. Usually, usually it's just a bunch of tricks, and sometimes it does get tedious. And especially on the environment side, I hate to pick on environments and it just seems like whenever I'm on environment work, it's like, how can I put together this insanely difficult puzzle, like, um, you know, puzzle and put all these pieces together and it has to, all, all the pieces, you can only use three pieces to make this beautiful puzzle, but you've got to do all these like vertex color tricks and s shading and uh, layers and f trickery and post to get these three simple basic shapes and 100 verts to be duplicated everywhere and somehow hold up as like a real experience that doesn't look completely um, lackluster. And sometimes you fail. Sometimes, you know, even on the character side, sometimes you put something in and it's like, well, you know, <laughs> once it gets m murdered in... Uh, to get the run real time, 
you know, that's why we end up having to make decisions on silhouettes and stuff just for poly counts and material counts. You know, you, you the source can look great. It'll look great in your portfolio, which is awesome. But getting it to look great in engine is a whole other trickery. Lots of trickery. It depends on the game engine and it depends on, I mean, uh, the source on the game side is fun too because it really isn't a whole lot different than the source for anything else. It's just high res polygons. Um, it's just implementing that is part of the challenge and getting that to look good and under a budget is, is some people consider it a challenge and fun and other people are just like, you know what? I don't need this in my life. And then, you know, games probably isn't for you just yet. I mean, there is, if we ever go to server-side rendering in a real way, uh, you know, we won't really need, lim you know, min spec or anything like that. It'll just be everything's rendered on the cloud and we're going to stream it to your computer. You're going to ping back your location. And then as you play your video game, you can play any video game you want on a, a toaster if you want to, just because all you're doing is streaming. You're, you're pinging your location and it's streaming the video back to you while you're playing the game on the cloud. Of course, you're going to need really fast internet for that. Um, so maybe that'll work, maybe that won't. I'm going to duplicate this off. I'm going to bring back my um, things here. I'm going to fill this color, fill object. I'm going to grab this one. I've been wanting to use this one. Uh, let's do this way here. And we can kind of maybe do multiples of these. So let's make my brush, make it really big here. So we'll kind of brush this out in the X. So we'll grab this one. We'll see how that looks. That's kind of cool. And then I'll bring this back here. And then uh, make this smaller, actually. And we can actually tilt this thing, too. If you don't want to tilt like this way, I guess we could rotate it temporarily. Let's see if we can do, we can do Y only or Z only. Yeah, it's not going to work. Let's, let me think. F. I guess it's easier just to hit Z. Um, again, you can reset this thing and then you can rotate it here. So I think that'll work. So we'll hit Z again. And again, it might be easier to just save all of these things to, instead of painting through here, just save all of your brush eraser brushes to alphas, bring them in as alphas, and then you can just use drag dot and drag them around like we were doing with this thing here. Ooh, yeah, and also don't forget negative shapes too. Interesting. We'll hit uh, Shift C, we'll hit X. No, we'll hit darker. Yeah, for some reason when I go to a dark color, I, am I forgetting something? It seems like it's something I should know, like why would my material default to something different? I don't know. Now we'll go back to white color. Standard brush, dot stroke. Cool, glad you can make it. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I yeah, nobody nobody says too much silly stuff, and I'm I'm sillier than anybody else, so. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Again, I don't have anything really planned tonight. We can make robots. I, I do need to start working on those characters again. I keep pushing them off because it's more concepty, and that's when I'm in that mood. What I like to do is not be on TV. I like to be um, just watching Star Trek or listening to some books. I'm in the middle of Stephen King's Black House right now. Um, I'm starting another sci-fi book recommended by one of my Gemini students. I need to start that. Um, also, I'm going to put in a uh, rectangle brush in this dot stroke so we can do a little bit more squared off. Um, I read Le Leviathan Wakes. That was pretty good. She recommended that. So, yeah, this is going to be this guy's shoulders here. We can do a big old rib cage, be like a big old metallo. That was another thing. I was watching um, on DC Universe Online. The first ZBrush hard edge model I did was metallo. And I was watching the Blur Cinematic. And the Blur Cinematic 
it looked pretty much like the Mattel I made for um for the game. I was pleasantly surprised. I was like, man, back then if I could have like made a cinematic version, that would have been really cool. But Blur did a great job with their stuff. Am I missing? I'm getting some weird noises here. My phone. Sorry. Don't normally have this stuff going. Let me get a drink of water. Ah. Okay, so um, we got this thing going. We got a cool rib cage here. We can always put now because I'm not going to be extracting any information off of him. I can always start painting a little bit of grayscale in here. And just like we were talking about when we did the weapon concept thing, and if you go to my YouTube channel, do I have Nightbot on here? Ah, oh, you know I don't. Do um. Google that. Uh, on the playlist in there, there's uh, my workshop, my Twitch TV workshop for this channel, and then also on Pixelogic's um, YouTube channel, they have my workshop. So we were doing we weapon concepting on my workshop. Uh, just, just a little bit of fun stuff. And uh, we went a little bit deeper into the Brush Raider stuff. And also in the, let me go on a little tangent here. When we were doing the Pixelogic one, uh, where would this be? Texture, import, environments. It's been a while since I was doing this wall panel. Concept, there we go. Uh, this wall here, uh, add it please, texture, add a spotlight. Uh, this wall here was done doing the brainstormer stuff too where you just um, go through and then you just plop in all the brainstormer stuff. This reminds me of some of the Halo stuff from way back when too. They had um, a bunch of you know call out sheets like this. So that's where I got the idea to just do a bunch of sci-fi looking stuff. And then you could paint that, paint through this on a wall and just piece it together. And then you could use that to kind of, and you could just quickly get that into engine, just paintings or doing a quick extraction or a quick uh, depth grab. Uh, and throw that in the game and decimate it just to kind of get a feel for like, well, is there too much detail? Are the panels big enough, small enough? Is the line of sight working for you? And you could do all of that really, really quickly just using painted on stuff. So in fact, let's bring back, let's go Z. Let's bring back our thing here. So we should be able to possibly maybe knock this back and we could pull in some of this shape here. You know, if we wanted to give him like a medallion right here, we could kind of maybe pull in some of this stuff here. Or maybe, you know what, the side he looks even cooler. So let's do like this side here. And honestly, this is this is all new to me. I don't normally do this, but you know, what's the point of showing up every time and doing exactly what I'm comfortable doing? That would be too easy. I'm going to make a fool of myself doing a bunch of weirdo shit instead. We'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. Looking, looking. Let's rotate this guy. Little armpit. We can do another... Uh, And hell, this could be anything. This could be the start of like a sword. I'm doing a, like a sci-fi weapon sword I want to use for the sci-fi lady. Maybe we can pull that in. We can start on that maybe. And you don't have the concept. I just, again, this is the only reason I do this stuff recently is because I get so bogged down in 3D sometimes. It's nice to be able to break myself out of that, that mold and just kind of try some new stuff. If it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, well, I didn't really lose anything. It's not like I forgot how to concept in 3D. Just, you know, it's always good to kind of break yourself out of your comfort zone and maybe try some different stuff. But anyway, I don't know. That kind of worked. But let's keep working on that form here. So we got some big old shoulders here. We can pop these down. So if we're just doing hands here, I kind of want to connect this here, see if he's... Does he want a head? 
maybe your shoulders are pretty intense now this is the kind of thing where it's like well if I was in Photoshop I could maybe shrink these down I can't think of a fast easy way to do that in ZBrush so what I'm gonna do is we'll just sample this and we'll go you know what let's shrink that down just a little bit sample here and uh, these are kind of cool they look like little uh, little blades he's got like a little skull in there I always put skulls and everything because I'm so goth go ahead and give some shoulders here there we go we got some cool stuff going on here I think it's cool you guys may think it's lame but we got something going here and he's gonna be a little bit stocky because I didn't plan very well let's see what's the best way so if I go let's problem solve a little bit here shall we uh, how are we doing on questions I'm pretty good Yeah, it does help. And sometimes, you know, I also go on ArtStation and then I'm like, wah, wah, I'm the worst artist in the world. But, you know, it also is super inspirational. I use, I use ArtStation all the time to kind of look at cool stuff. Um, yes. Um, yes, I do teach. I teach at um, the Gemini School of Visual Arts here in Austin. And then on online, I teach CG Master Academy. Um, I'm just wrapping up week six with... Uh, couple students so we're going through basically ZBrush part two and uh, they're doing really well I'm always I'm always amazed that my Gemini students are doing really well like this stuff is not easy if you've never especially if you've never used 3d before uh, but I've taught 3d to professionals too even at, at work and stuff and students really catch on really nicely um, I'm always really pleasantly surprised because like you guys should have seen the first year of my sculpting you know and digital even just modeling and just kind of get my ideas out and my students already do like way cooler stuff than I did for a long time <laughs> for sure um, and really the technique is nothing like how to make something is at the end of the day that's the that's the easy part it's what what do you make is the hard part like extruding faces that's always laugh when I when I get asked like, why do you use Zmodeler? So dumb. You should use 3D Studio Max or Modo or Maya or Cinema 4D or and it's like I, I do. I don't not use those programs. But if I'm just extruding faces 99% of the time, like really, I'm not gonna get evangelical about that. Use whatever you want. It's just a cube, it's just vertices, it's just components, you know? You use whatever you'd like that's the easy part the easy part is the Maya Moto Max thing I think you know maybe production maybe when you get into trickery maybe not when you get into and by trickery I mean just development and real-time solutions that's that can get a little bit hairier but just modeling eh, I don't know I don't know it's just modeling who cares it's just cubes at the end of the day, it's cubes, it's faces. Okay, so he's kind of stocky up top here. And we'll kind of pull his feet down here. Oh yeah, I was gonna troubleshoot and see if I can't stretch this out. So if we go, okay, I don't wanna lose that, but what I do wanna do is kind of maybe, okay, you know what I can do? I can just reproject. I can just paint through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, first I wanna bring my background back. Can I do that? Document, background, and then we'll do, um, <laughs> it's kind of a cool look. Range, rate, and we'll change the back to, I don't know why, just getting freaked out with a pure black background. Um, something like that. Uh, okay, so what we can do is we can duplicate this off here and now this one I want to stretch out. I'm going to go to my lowest division level, delete higher. We might as well do color fill object with white. And I'm going to lengthen this object here, which is going to throw off my, you know, if you think about, you know, wanting to have squares and then subdividing those to get nice square pixels as you paint, you're going to want to keep those square. So the easy way to do that is to go to brain fart 
Z remesher. Uh, adapt to size down to zero. Uh, we'll do same poly count, hit Z remesh, and that'll give us nice even squares. And then we can turn off the smooth modifier here. We can divide this up to subdivision level five, I think we were on. So now we can transfer this guy to this guy here. So I'm just gonna show these two. And this one is gonna be here. And if I go to have this one selected, and I have this one here, if I go to, this should work, everybody cross your fingers, project all with RGB on. Let's see if it worked. No. Okay, let's try this. So if I've got this here, and I'm gonna go to BZ project. Oh, you know what, let's turn on, I'm gonna turn on the paintbrush for this first. Let's try that again. Paintbrush is on which is colorized, by the way. And I just did the opposite of what I wanted. Okay, we'll try this. B, Z, P, we're gonna project. So we're gonna project from, oh, you know what? That makes sense. We wanna go from here to here, duh. Okay, let's try that again, project all. I'm used to doing geometry, where I have a low res and a high res. Um, so now what I can do is hide that, and it projected our paint on there. Let's make sure we didn't lose anything. I'm going to solo mode. I'm going to tap between here. Is this too low res? No big deal. I'm just going to subdivide, subdivide this one more time. We'll do a project all. Okay, so it does work. Just don't be dumb like me and do it right the first time. And it shouldn't be that big a deal. There we go. So now we have more paper room. Cool, awesome. Yeah, let me know how your CGMA goes. I'm actually revamping, revamping the class as we speak. I'm um, doing a little bit more focused, tight walkthrough of ZBrush. It's still intro to ZBrush, but it's a little more focused. And so I always feel bad because right now it's like you can kind of do whatever you want. Um, and sometimes that's helpful and some for problem solving and sometimes it really just isn't. So hopefully it works, it works out a little bit better. <laughs> Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so we got a little bit more leg room here. So let's go ahead and, you know, if we were doing human proportions and this was his head, it'd be like one, two, three, four, five. Wait, is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <whistles> Some long legs. So let's go ahead and fit this here. So what I'm gonna do, that still doesn't seem right. One, two, Three navel, four crotch, five mid thigh, six. Yeah, okay, that's a little bit long, but that's okay. We'll see how it goes. I just want to kind of get an idea of where his feet would end up if we were doing just like heroic proportions here. Don't get too caught up in that. Okay, so here we got some hips now, and now we've got a little bit of length here we can kind of work out, and I don't really know what I want this lower body to be. And also, you know, this is say this is his rudimentary rib cage here. And it doesn't have to be humanoid. I just always default to humanoid because I'm lame. But um we can start there at least I suppose. So we can go shoulders here and then bottom of the rib cage this would be here. But of course you can always kind of fudge that a little bit. You can make longer biceps, shorter biceps. Um, let's kind of pull this in a little bit. So here and then down Usually here, the great trochanter, the great mechanical trochanter here would usually hit you about your wrist, but I tend to kind of, you know, do a little, a little bit longer here, and I always go too big on the hands. So let's, let's continue that theme. If you see my ZBrush male sculpt, hands are ridiculous. My commander hands are like Scotty Pippen. Anybody remember Scotty Pippen? Am I too old already? Anybody remember Andre the Giant? Let me, let me just say names from my childhood. I, uh, 90s Bulls. I was here in Austin. I was going to high school in Georgetown, Texas. And man, oh man, I was, because I was born in Salt Lake City, Utah. So I'm kind of a jazz fan. At least my aunt is. She, my aunt has big posters of like 
oh, um, Carl Malone, mailman. And, and like in front, he's like, you know, got a little tank top on, muscled out, oiled up in front of an 18 wheeler. That was my aunt. And she had a big old poster of him in her downstairs. Big Carl Malone fan, big jazz fan. But uh, so I'm kind of a jazz fan by default. But uh, yeah, I don't know what the point of that story was. I'm just kind of distracting you from my uh, concepting. You know, <laughs> it does look like that. It kind of looks like a little bit like uh, Judge Dredd, you know, kind of that. You can kind of see his face here, and then there's kind of the little emblem. Uh, but you know what? I like that idea. Let's go. Let's go, British police officer here. Standard brush, black. There we go. Um, let's see if I want to do anything else while I'm in here. Maybe that can be like a little foot here. What else? What else? Anything good going with you guys? Any good movies? I haven't seen Logan yet. Um, I've heard that's really good. I go on these things where I go on the I go to the movies like all the time, and I ref okay, it's gonna sound totally first world problems here, but I only go to the movies if I can go to the Alamo Draft House or like Flicks Brew House or like any of the other ten other places, you Gold Star Seating or what a cinema or whatever. Um, in Austin, they have tons of these places where you just go in, you get a reclining seat, you get a beer, they serve you food. Um, but yeah, I can't do AMC or any of the regular stuff anymore. Like every time I go there, I always regret it. That's how I'm starting to get with Amazon nowadays. It's like every time I go to the store to buy something, they never have it. Or they have like one version of it that's totally not acceptable. Now I'm like, I'm always just, I just regret leaving the house now. I'm becoming a hermit. I think that'll work. <laughs> 